Now that we've taken a look at using polar coordinates, we're ready to do some calculus with polar coordinates as we answer the question, how do we find areas in polar coordinates, or polar curves would be more accurate. Before we actually get to working with area in polar coordinates, I want to go over some tips on how we can use the TI 83 or 84 calculator to help us with finding the correct areas in the polar curves, because it's really easy to find the incorrect area, the wrong part of the graph. So the first thing that we want to do is we need to make sure that the mode is set to polar. So you'll hit the mode button and make sure polar is selected. And what's nice about that, as we found out in our previous video, is now when you hit the y equals button, it will give us r equals equations. When we're going to graph these, though, a little tip is when you graph a polar graph, I would not recommend that you do not hit the graph button. Actually, it's a button. for the first drawing. Because some of these polar graphs are too large or too small, you're not going to see much in hitting just the graph button. So we're going to say, rather, we're going to hit the Zoom button and select Zoom Fit. And what zoom fit will do is it will center the graph as large as possible on the screen. So we'll use zoom fit to get a good view. Now, sometimes it skews this graph when we do this. Maybe the x's will count by 2's and the y's will count by 7's. And so we end up with a significant skew. But it does provide us a really good view of what the graph looks like. Something else to be aware of is the Window button. Because the Window button not only gives you a chance to set the minimum and maximum values for x and y's, the Window buttons will also allow you to select a range for theta for the angles. And then if you adjust that to reset it, we will use 0 to 2 pi. That's kind of the default. So whenever we change it, we need to remember to change it back to 0 to 2 pi. Otherwise, some weird things might happen. So let's take a look to see if we can correctly use the calculator to graph one petal of r equals 3 sine of 2 theta. 3 sine 2 theta is your typical rows. We're going to graph it first. So I'll pull up my calculator here. First, we'll go to mode to check to see if it is in polar coordinates, which it's not right now. So I'm going to scroll over and select polar coordinates. Second quick to go back home. Now when I hit the y equals button, I have r equals equations. Let's delete out the old equation. And we want to graph 3 sine of 2 theta. 3 sine of 2 theta. And when we close the parentheses, That'll give us the graph, but instead of just hitting graph, because I'm probably going to get a bad view of it, this first time I draw it, I'm going to click the Zoom button, and I will scroll down to find Zoom Fit. It's number 0 on my calculator. Depending on the version of your calculator, you, it might be a different number. So if you hit Zoom 
and then that number, it'll automatically zoom. You don't have to scroll. So it might be worth memorizing what number it is on your calculator. So I can hit Enter. And it'll quickly graph its four petaled rows. Our task is to try and graph only one petal. Let's try and graph this first petal. What I notice is it starts and ends at the origin. At that point, regardless of the angle, the radius I know is 0. That's what pulls it in towards the center. So we need to figure out what angles give us a radius of 0 so we can just graph one petal. Well, to do that, we'll go back to our equation, and we'll set that radius to 0 equals 3 sine of 2 theta. And solving this for theta will tell me what angles give me that center point. Dividing by 3 gives me 0 equals the sine of 2 theta. And I know from my unit circle that the sine is equal to 0 at the left and right points. So 2 theta is equal to maybe 0, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on and so forth. Dividing everything by 2 then, my theta, my angles, are equal to 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and so on and so forth. We just want one petal. So let's just connect from 0 to pi over 2. We're going to take theta and stick it in between those two values. And hopefully, that will give us exactly one petal of the rows. When I hit Window, I see the x min, and, or the theta min, and the theta max. These are our range for our thetas. We're going to go from 0, Enter to pi over 2. And if I type in pi and divide by 2 and hit Enter, it's going to give me a decimal approximation for that. And now I can hit graph because it's already been graphed for me. And what I notice is that does give me exactly one petal of my rows like we were hoping for. So all that to give you kind of an orientation to how to get what we want on the calculator. Let's see now if we can use that to help us actually do what we wanted to do, which was to find areas. To find an area in polar coordinates is similar to rectangular coordinates in that we're going to take an integral from A to B. But a slight difference is we're going to take half the integral from A to B of the radius squared d theta. That is going to be the big formula for today, half the integral from a to b of r squared d theta. So going back to the example we were just looking at, let's see if we can find the area of one petal of r equals 3 sine of 2 theta. Well, to do that, we'll take 1 half times the integral. And we need to usually do some work to find our a to b. However, we just found out in our previous example that that theta is going to go from 0 to pi over 2 to give us 1 petal of the radius squared. So 3 squared is 9. Sine squared of 2 theta, d theta. This integral then should give us the entire area of one petal. I'm going to pull that 9 out because it's a constant. It gives us 9 halves times the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Then we're integrating sine squared. And we know we can't really integrate sine squared. But we have a nice property that says that's 1 half minus 1 half of the cosine of double the angle, 4 theta d theta. And now I can integrate that to get 9 halves times half of a theta 
minus the antiderivative of cosine is sine. But we have to divide by that 4. So we actually end up with 1 8 sine of 4 theta. And that's going to be integrated from 0 to pi over 2. So we have 9 halves times 1 half of theta, which is pi over 2, minus 1 8 of the sine of 4 times theta. 4 times pi over 2 is 2 pi minus 1 half times 0 plus 1 eighth times the sine of 4 pi times 0, which is 0. And when we simplify all that, we get 9 halves times pi over 4. And all the rest of the pieces actually go to 0. So for our final area of one petal, we get 9 pi over 8. So that's how we can find area with these polar coordinates. Let's do one more example to make sure we've got it. Let's find the area inside r equals 1 minus the cosine of theta. Well, first, to get an idea of what's going on, we'll go back to our calculator. We'll clear out the old function. We're doing 1 minus the cosine of theta. Under window, remember we've got to reset our min and max. Otherwise, weird things happen. We want to go from 0 to 2 pi as a default. And then we'll zoom. On my calculator, hitting 0 will give me a zoom fit. Your calculator might have a different number. And this is kind of the shape we're trying to find the area inside of. Well, what we see is it seems to start and end again where the radius is 0. So again, we're going to figure out when that radius is 0. So 0 equals 1 minus cosine of theta. If I add cosine of theta to both sides, we want to know where the cosine is equal to 1. And if I think about my unit circle, cosine is equal to 1 over here on the right. So theta is equal to 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, and so on. But we just want to get one loop of it, which goes from 0 to 2 pi. So we want theta to range from 0 to 2 pi. And that's where we set the default. So we don't need to adjust it at all. We're ready now to go to our formula that says the area is 1 half times the integral from a to b, which we just found out was 0 to 2 pi, of the radius squared, 1 minus cosine theta squared d theta. And it might be worth on this one to go ahead and square that out, 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared of theta d theta. We recognize that cosine squared. We should be really familiar with what to do with that one. From 0 to 2 pi of 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus, let's break this up to 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2 theta d theta. We could combine like terms if we wanted to, but there's not much combining that happens. So let's go ahead and take the antiderivative, which is going to be 1 half times a theta minus 2 sine theta plus 1 half of a theta plus the antiderivative of cosine is sine of 2 theta. But to account for that 2 theta, we have to divide by 2, which gives us 1 fourth. And we're integrating from 0 to 2 pi. Plugging that in, then, we get 1 half times 
theta, which is 2 pi. Notice when we plug 2 pi into sine, we'll get 0. Actually, I shouldn't cross it off just in case we get something on the subtraction step. So we have 2 pi plus 1 half of theta. 1 half of 2 pi is just 1 pi. And 1 fourth sine of 2, 2 times 2 pi, which is the sine of 4 pi, which is also 0. And then when we plug 0 in, everything goes off to 0. The sine of 0 is 0, theta is 0, half of 0 is 0. So we end up with a total of 3 pi over 2 is the area inside that curve 1 minus the cosine of theta. So as long as we've got this important formula down, 1 half integral from a to b of r squared d theta, the integrals, the area inside these polar curves is not too difficult to find. We can do one twist on it, though, and instead find the area between curves. And just like we found the area between curves with rectangular coordinates by subtracting the top from the bottom, we're going to do much the same thing to find the area between curves. We want to find the area outside of r equals 2 plus 2 sine theta and inside r equals 6 sine theta. Well, first, we need to get an idea of what shape we're looking at. So we're going to use the calculator to help us with that. Clear out the old function. The first function that we want to be outside of is 2 plus 2 sine of theta. And we want to be inside 6 sine of theta. As I graph this, I'm going to take very careful note of which graph graphs first, because I want to be outside of the 2 plus 2 sine theta. I want to be outside of the first curve and inside the second curve, the 6 sine theta. So as it graphs, I need to be very aware of outside the first, inside the second. Let's go ahead and hit zoom fit, which is 0 on my operating system. Outside that first one, inside the second one. So I want to be outside the first curve and inside the second one. It's kind of this sideways half moon on top is what I want to be inside of. Let's kind of draw a quick picture of it. So one function was this half circle. The other function was kind of this upside down heart looking thing. But the top function, the blue function, is the 6 sine theta. I want to be inside that one and outside the 2 plus 2 sine theta, which means the area we're finding is this kind of sideways half moon on top, which means we really need to know what are the two points of intersection so I know where to integrate from and to. Well, those lines intersect where the radii are equal. So we'll set the two functions equal. The first is 2 plus 2 sine theta. The second is 6 sine theta. Subtract 2 sine theta from both sides to get 4 sine theta. Divide by 4 and 1 half equals the sine of theta. I think about my unit circle. Sine, the y-coordinate, is 1 half at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So theta is equal to pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. To test that, let's set our minimum and maximum on our calculators. Hitting window, we're going to go from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. 
And now when it graphs, it's going to graph the exact shape that we want to find the area of. We're ready to integrate. We know that the area is found by taking 1 half times the integral from our limits of pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. And we know from our prior study that we take the outside function minus the inside function. So the outside function is 6 sine theta. But remember, in polar coordinates, we have to square them. So we have 36 sine squared of theta. And we'll subtract the other function, which is 2 plus 2 sine of theta squared d theta. We now have the integral that we can use to find the area between these curves. A little simplifying as we square out the binomial. So 1 half from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of 36 sine squared theta minus, that minus has to distribute through, 2 squared is 4, minus 8 sine theta, minus 4 sine squared of theta d theta. I'm going to combine like terms. So we have 1 half times the integral of pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. 36 minus 4 is 32 sine squared of theta minus 4 minus 8 sine of theta d theta. Noticing here that all my terms in that integral are even, I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 1 half through the integral so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of 16 sine squared theta minus 2 minus 4 sine theta d theta. Now I'm going to break up that sine squared. Uh, and we're going to multiply by 16. So when we have the 1 half, 16 times a half is 8. Minus 16 times a half is 8. Cosine of 2 theta. Minus 2 minus 4 sine theta d theta. I'm going to combine like terms again. Pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. 8 minus 2 is 6 minus 8 cosine of 2 theta minus 4 sine of theta d theta. And now we're finally ready to integrate. We end up with 6 theta minus the antiderivative cosine is sine of 2 theta. But when we divide by 2, we get 4 minus the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So we have 4 cosine theta integrated from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. So let's plug it all in. We have 6 times the 5 pi over 6 minus 4 sine of 2 theta, which is 5 pi over 3 plus 4 cosine of theta, which is 5 pi over 6, minus 6 times the pi over 6, plus 4 times the sine of 2 times pi over 6, which makes it pi over 3, minus 4 times the cosine of pi over 3. Oops, sorry, pi over 6. So to help us out, we might want to think about our unit circle. We need to know a 5 pi over 3, which is going to be down in the fourth quadrant. This is 5 pi over 3. It has coordinates of 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2. We're also going to need to know about 5 pi over 6, 
which is over here, 5 pi over 6. And that has coordinates of negative root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. We need to know about pi over 3, which has coordinates of 1 half comma root 3 over 2. And pi over 6 is another one we need. There's a lot of them on here. That one's pi over 6 has coordinates of root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. All right, plugging it all in then, we have the, let's switch colors, 6 is divide out. So we have 5 pi minus 4 times the sine of pi over th 5 pi over 3. Sine's the y coordinate, which is negative, making it positive, root 3 over 2. Plus 4 times the cosine of 5 pi over 6. Cosine's the x coordinate, making it negative, root 3 over 2. Minus the 6's divide out, just pi. Plus 4 times the sine of pi over 3, sine being the y coordinate, root 3 over 2. Minus 4 times the cosine of pi over 6, cosine being the x coordinate, root 3 over 2. And this simplifies quite nicely because we've got a couple opposites in there. 4 root 3 over 2 and negative 4 root 3 over 2 is 0. 4 root 3 over 2 and negative 4 root 3 over 2 is 0. So we're just left with 5 pi minus pi leaves us with 4 pi, the area that we're looking for on that curve beneath the 6 sine theta and above the 2 plus 2 sine theta. Area there is 4 pi. Let's do one last example, make sure we've got a really good grip on this. Number two, we're going to find the area inside the curve r equals 4 cosine theta and outside the curve r equals 2. Let's take a look at our calculator. All right, first thing we need to do is plug this formula in. So let's delete out these old formulas from the previous problem. Our first one is 4 cosine theta, which means the first graph we want to be inside of. So we'll take note of the first graph. The second graph of 2 we want to be outside of. For our window, we have to reset it to 0 to 2 pi. And then I'll zoom fit so we get a good picture. We want to be inside this first curve on the right outside the second curve on the left. So we're really looking for the right area here shaded. So if we draw a quick picture of what we're working with, the first function was the circle on the right. The second function was the circle in the center. And if you can excuse my crude drawing, you see we want the area, the right part of that. Which means, again, so we know our limits of integration, we need to find where those points intersect. That's where our functions are equal. So we will say 4 cosine theta equals 2. Divide by 2, cosine theta is 1 half. So if I think about my unit circle, where is the cosine 1 half? The x coordinate is 1 half up on top and near the bottom. That happens at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So we're going to say theta is probably going to go from pi over 3 to 5 pi over 3. But just to make sure, we'll go back to our calculator and check to make sure that's going to give us the area on the right that we're looking for. We'll click Window. For the minimum, we want to go from pi over 3 to a maximum of 5 pi over 3. And when we hit graph, what you notice is something unexpected happens. It does not give us this section to the right we want. It gave us everything else that we didn't want. So we were going from pi over 3 to 5 pi over 3, and that didn't work. Maybe what we want to do is go the other direction and get that other grouping. Well, we can't go from 5 pi over 3 to pi over 3. But what we can do 
is continue around the circle. And after 2 pi, the next top point, 6 pi over 3, 1 more pi over 3 is 7 pi over 3. Because remember, our trig formulas have an infinite number of solutions. The next point we could try is 7 pi over 3. And we're probably going to be between those values. So let's take a look at the graph and see if going from a window of 5 pi over 3 to the next lap around at 7 pi over 3, does that give me the graph I want? Hitting graph, you see it does give us that half moon shape that we were looking for. So these now are our limits of integration for this problem. Now that we have our limits of integration, we're ready to use our formula that the area is 1 half times the integral from 5 pi over 3 to 7 pi over 3 of the outside function, which was the blue one before cosine theta squared makes it 16 cosine squared theta minus the outside function that we crossed out, which is just 2 squared becomes 4 d theta. And now we have the integral we need to solve to find the area between these two curves. Again, one thing I notice is all the terms are even. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 1 half through. So we have the integral from 5 pi over 3 to 7 pi over 3 of 8 cosine squared theta minus 2 d theta. And it seems like the trig formula that we use the most anymore is that cosine squared or sine squared. So we're going to integrate from 5 pi over 3 to 7 pi over 3. Cosine squared gives us a 1 half. But when multiplied by 8, that leaves us with 4 plus 1 half times 8 is 4 cosine of 2 theta minus the 2 still d theta. Let's go ahead and combine the like terms of 4 minus 2. So we're integrating 5 pi over 3 to 7 pi over 3 of 2 plus 4 cosine of 2 theta d theta. And now we're ready to actually integrate. When we integrate, we get 2 theta plus the antiderivative of cosine is the sine of 2 theta. We have to divide by the 2, which just leaves us with 2 sine of 2 theta integrated from 5 pi over 3 to 7 pi over 3. So when we plug that in, we get 2 times our theta, which is 7 pi over 3, plus 2 times the sine of 2 theta, which is 14 pi over 3 minus 2 times theta, which is 5 pi over 3, minus 2 times the sine of 2 theta, which is 10 pi over 3. Let's think about our unit circle to help us with those strange ones. We've got to figure out 14 pi over 3 and 10 pi over 3. That's going to loop us around the circle a couple times. So to help us out, I'm going to count in 3 pi's. So we've got 0, 3 pi over 3, 6 pi over 3, 9 pi over 3, and 12 pi over 3, looping us around the circle over and over again. Uh, that should help us see that 14 pi over 3 is right here. 14 pi over 3 is going to be the same as 2 pi over 3. So the coordinates there are negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2. And later, when we get to the 10 pi over 3, 10 pi is a little more than 9. So it's going to be down here. 10 pi over 3 turns out to be the same as 4 pi over 3. So the coordinates there are negative 1 half, negative root 3 over 2. 
So when we simplify to bring it all together, we get 14 pi over 3 plus 2 times the sine of 14 pi over 3 sines the y coordinate, root 3 over 2, times 2 gives us just a root 3, minus 2 times 5 is 10 pi over 3, minus 2 times the sine of 10 pi over 3, sine being the y coordinate it's going to be a negative, negative times a negative is a positive, root 3 over 2 times 2 is just root 3, Combining like terms, 14 minus 10 is 4 pi over 3, plus root 3 and root 3 is 2 square roots of 3. Which means the area between these two circles is going to be 4 pi over 3 plus 2 square roots of 3. So now it's your turn to take a look at some of these on the homework assignment to practice them, get really good. The key formula here for the area, we've been using it all the way through, is that the area is 1 half times the integral from a to b of the radius squared d theta. Try a few of these, and we'll look at them more in class. <laughs>